started this morning. Um, thank you for joining us. This is the showcase from Theater 424 Hawaiian Acting Workshop and this is our final ho'ike or culminating performance. Each scene that you will watch today this morning has been originally put together, composed. There was a research process where the students looked to these mo'olelo, these traditional stories, um, some contemporary stories as well, and then they decided how they wanted to tell these stories, employing different forms of traditional Hawaiian performance or indigenous performance forms. Um, I am Kumuhai Opua Baker. Um, and it is, it is really a privilege for me to be doing the work that I am doing in, in this department and being able to have our traditional mo'olelo um, retold for this generation, for this hanauna of people. And it, it just brings me pleasure to be able to guide my haumana and have them rediscover these, these particular mo'olelo and then have them really bring creative energy into the work and retell the story so that it can become relevant to them. So I thank you for joining us today. Um, we will be starting with a traditional mele, and this mele is Aihea Kawaiakane, and I will call all of our Aumana up to the stage for this. They will be reciting this in honor of Kane, our God of life, of the sun, of fresh water. Oh, 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 
kaumi kawa ke kane o ke akamahana kawahine ha na o ke ke alani vahine o kana loa kapulehu ke kane o ke ke alani vahine kawahine ha na o ke ave ke kahi ali o kamoku o ke ave ke kahi ali o kamoku ke kane o kala ni kaulele ia ibi kawahine ha na o ke e o moku nui o ke e o moku nui ke kane o kamaka i moku kawahine ha na o ke e ua O ke ua ke kāne, o ke kui o kui wakawahine, hāna o kāmehameha, o kāmehameha ke kāne, o kalakua ka heihei māli e kawahine, hāna o kīna u, o ke kua naua ke kāne, o kīna u kawahine, hāna o maila o ka māmalu, e ola ka raino o kalani o ka māmalu.
will always with you. You disgust me. Come on. It is time. Monster Ox, you shall leave these islands and never return. By the grace of God, King of the Hawaiian Islands, know that whereas on the 20th day of May, 1857, we did in the exercise of our royal prerogative and for grave reasons affecting ourselves and our family, caused Marcus Montserrat to be expelled the kingdom and prohibited him from returning to our dominion forever under penalty of death.
transition there. <laughs> we'll transition. Um, it's a sound problem. No can help, yeah? <laughs> that was pigeon. <laughs> yeah. But um, so we're going to move into this interactive um, uh, piece and it's about one tiny little segment in the cool people. The cool people is our cosmogonic creation chant. And there are 16 ba, or 16 uh, eras of this chant. The students took one era connected to sea life and developed an interactive TYA um, presentation for this part of the community. And I'm going to hand over to you guys. So, as she said, this is interactive, so if you guys want to be a part 
part of it, please come up on stage and sit in a circle. Sarah and I, are, uh, my name is Audrey, for those who don't know. We're going to help you sit in the circle. Okay. Huh? Awesome. My Hila Hila. <laughs>
the idea is our own way of doing it. People who hate the Kawama, he knew he was an eye of his own, or he had a book in Amo, a boy, Amo Kanaka. Born as Amo Amo Moks. C. Guarded by the Amo Amo Nis. Darkness, substance, light, earth, water, food of the plant, God enters, God enters, man cannot enter. Man for the narrow street, woman for the broad street. And then the one with Sisakami, 
He is the God. Water, vine, flourish. The long nights of summer, fruitful, very fruitful, spreading here, spreading there, spreading this way, spreading that way, rubbing with earth, holding up the sky. The time passes, the night time. He's a farmer. Now when you're more 
familiar with the infamous staining qualities of Hawaiian red dirt that can stain anything from shirts to skin, it makes sense that Lono might have a bit of a red tint to him. But Kamata Nui Ahai Lono just wasn't the case. But he digressed and went about his way. There are plenty more to heal after all. But as soon as he left, well, villages are gossipy, and everybody <laughs> ran to tell Lono. They said, Lono, Lono, the strange man came in and he said that you're gravely ill. And Lona replied, no, here I am, <coughs> healthy, without a bit of sickness. And yet, I am ill. After making sure his point was heard, Lona picked up his dick to his And he took it, and he slammed it through his foot. Blood gushed everywhere. Lona fainted. Everyone was horrified. together for a long time. And there are plenty of adventures of Lono on his own. <coughs> However, thanks to his foot injury, not unlike mine, he got renamed Lono Puha, which you might be familiar from many of the island medical union's names. They come from that. <laughs> but that's our story. And wouldn't you look at it? My wounds all healed.
chicken skin, right? It's goosebumps. It's when the, the skin crawls or, or rises. And this is a modern story um, set today. And I'll let them tell the story. Anyway, I'll let them tell the story. upon a time, there was a man who questioned the gods. He would go around trying to tell everyone that the Akua were not real, that we need to stop worshipping them. He even tried to tell the elite, going so far as to say that the gods are going to kill us all. We need to stop making them out to be so powerful. He was disregarded as insane and sentenced to death. He escaped before he could be put down. But before he left, he told everyone around him, I am going to the Heio, and I'm going to take a Bohaku to prove to all of you that the gods are fake. So that is what he did. He stole a rock, and he ran away. He ran as far away as he could go. He went through forests, across beaches, up and down mountains, and he kept running until he got tired. He found a stream that connected to Aloi, and he went to go take a drink from it. As he bent down, however, he started to feel extremely heavy. So heavy, in fact, that he, could, he just couldn't move. His muscles tensing up, his head getting heavy, his eyes starting to blur over. That's when he saw it. A figure covered in smoke slowly making its way towards him. He wanted to scream, but he couldn't. The figure kept moving forward, and this feeling of dread washed over him, like an evil peacock. And then, poof, it was gone. He could move again, and he went right back to running. 
eventually, he came to another spot to rest. Thinking back, he thought, maybe it was nothing. Maybe he was just seeing things due to being tired. So, he decided to take a nap. He started to have a nightmare. This time, the figure was back. And he could move, but everywhere he went, the figure appeared in front of him. He laid there, crying and crying, till the figure came up and spoke to him. Its voice was soft, but distinct. And all it said was one single word, Pohaku. Startled awake, the man set out to return the stone back to the Heiau. When he returned, he saw the kahuna standing there, and so was the figure. The man asked the kahuna, Do you not see that? The kahuna turned around and, I see nothing. Defeated by what had happened, the man put the stone back and turned around to leave without a word. He started to feel heavy again and collapsed from exhaustion. The kahuna looked at the man and turned back to the figure. No one ever seems to listen, do they? Well? All right, that's enough. You're supposed to be making friends, not scaring them. Oh, come on. There's no harm in scary stories. <laughs> you think that's scary? Yeah. I got one better. Oh, no. <laughs> intruders and I have to go wake up the supervisor immediately but I was frozen and the noises got louder and closer and then I heard a conch shell going off the beating of a drum older men chanting what is going on am I actually hearing all of this I thought I kept walking closer oh! Oh, whatever, fine. I'll 
回答。Where did you find him? He's Crystal's friend. <laughs> Can someone find, find Crystal? Do you know where she is? Yeah. Can someone please go find her? Yeah. <laughs> oh, fine. <laughs> guys, guys, what if the spirit gets them? Your friend is a freak. <laughs> is from the mother's side. If it's found from the waist up, it's a close family member, like a sister or brother. But it's, if it's found from the waist down, it's from a distant family member, like an auntie or an uncle. One day, long before I was born, my tutu had a normal day. She woke up, got dressed, and was about to walk outside when she felt a sharp pain on her back. She went to check in a mirror, and she noticed a bruise in the shape of a bite mark. It was dark and had a distinct impression of teeth. Knowing of the Nahuakua, she frantically calls up her mom and dad and asks them if any of their family members are in danger or in need of help. The next day, Tutu's house was filled with a variety of family members, ranging from grandparents to distant brothers-in-law. They formed a line outside to check to see if the shape of their, if their mouth and their teeth would match the shape and size of the bruise. When it came up to my Tutu's brother, it was a shock to everyone that his mouth matched the bruise. They immediately took him to the doctors and found out he had terminal illness and only had a few more months to live. It was a really emotional time for my family, and in the end, Tutu's brother did die of cancer, but his spirit was on. But no one in my family is sick or dying. Guys, what's going on? We heard a scream. Where's Kaala? Is he with you? What do you mean, that guy that was here? No, I wouldn't be. He's my cousin! And he was supposed to find you. Where is he? This doesn't make sense. He wouldn't get lost out here. Keep it funny. The bruise. The knock will pull. What if it's Keala? Okay. I can't handle this anymore. I can't. I can't. I gotta go. I'm getting out of here. Whoa, whoa, wait, wait, wait. You're my ride. Right. Oh, my. That was dramatic. <laughs> when do you guys can take me back, yeah? What the fuck was that? <laughs> Is the wood cut the pole? The what? We need to go. This is all your fault! What? You shouldn't have taken that Kohaku! My fault? Who planned a camping trip in the middle of fucking nowhere? You did put the rock back, didn't you? I threw it in the woods somewhere. Whatever, it's gone like you wanted. We need to get out of here now! You stupid fucking house! Like, where were you thinking taking the Kohaku? Like, look, I didn't think it mattered. Whatever, I'm gonna find my cousin. Well, what am I supposed to do? I don't know. Cover your eyes. 
rise and pray for forgiveness, you need to make this right. closer, and I could hear them more clear now, the beating of a drum, men chanting. I felt as if they were coming for me, something was coming towards me. I closed my eyes and collapsed to the ground, begging this was all a dream, and I would wake up. Please, 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 please. And then there was silence, and I was left in the dark.
Should we wait for her? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to wait. Soon after, Ellie appears to watch the crashing waves. Oh, look who finally decided to show up. You ready now? Yeah, you never come with us when we come to the oh, beach. Oh, 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 oh,
but I must find out why. Why I feel so exhausted. He got the watch over me. Let no one, not even your sisters, wake me from this. Am I clear? Yes, sister. Good. And one more thing. If, if I do not wake in nine days and eight nights, call out to me. Bring me back with the Hulihia Chanata. Do you think it's Wahia Loa that calls to you? After all these years, I hope so. If, if that is the case, then my slumber is crucial. Nelly lies down. Iyaka takes a low E, a leaf symbolizing royalty, and holds it above Nelly's head.
I'm going to step to the side so you can hear the story of Lot Lane. Mahalo. <laughs> In darkness, the sound of a steel door opens as light from offstage fills in. Once he lands, the light from offstage narrows closed to a shut with the sound of a massive steel door closing. It's dark again. He tries again striking the flame. Same result. He successfully lights his candle. Because of the candle, we can now see that this man is dressed in black and white striped prison attire, shackled at the wrists and ankles. Eventually, when he's ready, wondering why I asked you here. Truth is, I'm not sure exactly. You see, I'm no more here than any of you are. I'm breathing the same air as you, occupying the same space as you. I'm hearing the same thing. He reconsiders. never been me. Or so they say. Turns out I'm not much of a starter or an ender. I, mean, I know those people. I admire those people, not for what they start or end, but more so for their ability to. You see, I'm more of a doer. I just do. You don't have to tell me to go. I'm already doing. I've been doing. Because that's what I do. I do. Doers usually end up not ending. Or starting for that matter. By the time you know who I am, I'm already gone. I, I just kept going. By the time you're ready to end, I'm not there anymore. I didn't end, I just kept on doing. Somewhere else, out of sight, no longer with you. But still doing. Just breathing different air, occupying different space. Somewhere else. But still doing doing something else. No, 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 no. Thank you. Where was I? <laughs> oh, yes. You there. You probably have something sitting on a nightstand. Maybe even a dresser. Possibly even a drawer. It's a drawer, isn't it? It's a drawer half filled with things that have no use, no do. Maybe there's something in there that reminds you of a beginning. Maybe there's something in there you don't really want to end yet. Or maybe that's, that's it, isn't it? There's an ending in there. It's an ending. An ending of something you don't want to fully end. And so you keep it going. You keep it. You keep it tucked away with other beginnings and endings that are still beginning and ending and a drawer half filled with them. in the know that I am. 
we are breathing the same air after all, occupying the same space, occupying the same space, occupying. He reconsiders. <laughs> I mean, maybe you even looked a little into the easier to find details, possibly even looked into the harder ones, like the hows and whens and with whoms, but it is the whys. It is the whys where we all come up a little short in the end, isn't it? Except for me, because I don't end, nor did I ever begin, or so they say. But there's a dog. No, there's a horse. There's also a horse. Horse was my horse. Not a beauty by any means. Horse was just good enough. I liked horse. Horse liked me, and I mortgaged horse. I did. I mortgaged them for trolley fare for the guys I wrangled for the fight. <coughs> Could have used horse, actually. Any horse, really. Would have been more useful than any of those men. At least the horse could run more than a mile without giving up. Or we could have just... That door slides open again. Something metal-sounding is slid in on the floor. Looks like a tray. The door slams shut. He goes to fetch it. <laughs> it is a tray. He inspects the food on it. Smells good enough. He carries the tray off to the other side. He knocks with the tray softly, then lifts open the tiny door and slides the tray of food in. He lets the tiny door fall shut. You really like your endings, don't you? Of course you do. They're important. They're important to you. Endings are important. Without them, we'd all still just be doing it. We can't keep doing it. That'd be too hard. So we got to end things. Where was I? Oh yes, there was a dog. No one will hold me. You ever notice how we all stop what we're doing? Abrupt end to a conversation when we hear the clinking of a glass? Imagine it with me. You're talking to a friend, listening to I don't know, yourself tell the same story you told another friend five minutes ago, or you're just listening to someone like me go on and on about what you read in the papers today, or you're, or you're, or you're getting to tell your story, your big idea to someone, someone who will finally listen. Maybe he's the one that you wanted to, you were hoping to, planning to see, and he's there. No, it's a she. She, yes, she's the one. She's the one you were hoping to, planning to see, and there she is. She is there. She is listening, and you are soaring. You are just letting fly your rehearsed thoughts, and I say rehearsed only to imply that it's that important because it is. These are your thoughts and your dreams, and she is listening, and you are flying. Every twinkle in her eye tells you to fly higher, and you do. You fly because this is your chance. This is your opportunity to be seen and heard and understood. And then, clink, clink. It's empty. The door opens. The door closes. Another tray of food slides out. Reputation just does the work for me. It keeps doing. So before I got here, all these boys over here, they weren't being fed. 
and they remain kept full, sick folk, becoming sick folk themselves. Not anymore, though. I'm here. Or my reputation is. It's a funny system, ain't it? What's these boys here? Prisoners of war pled guilty. They'd have no idea what they were pleading guilty to, but they made it very perfectly clear in court. They said whatever they did, they only did it because I made them fight. They got 10 years for treason. Oh, me? Yeah, I did it. Said so, too. Raised my hand proudly in court and said, yeah, that was me. I did that. I'm going to do it again. But it ain't treason. It can only be treason if I committed a crime against my own country or my own queen. And those people over there, they aren't that. They gave me five years. It's a funny system, man. I'm a lot lame. The Irish Union never really gets the attention. It's the Hawaiian half that always clinks the glass whenever I enter a room, demanding immediate attention, demanding a beginning. Do it yourself. I'm a lot lame. Descendant of Irish and Hawaiian kings, you say that enough times, people just start to believe you. But if you get the right people to say it, well, then it just becomes true. I'm a lot lame. One side says I'm a traitor, the other side says I'm a hero. I ask you this, which one is it? Is it possible to be both? Are your endings ruined if I am neither? In order for my story to be worthy of being told by you, do you require my story in the end to be believed as brave and proud? Or are you just going to listen to what they say? They praise my capture as just that. Capture the so-called desperado, the mighty Lot Lane. Gives himself up like the rest of them Hawaiians. That's a smart move. He slams the tray at the other door. They're going to praise me as weak and desperate. He slams the tray at the other door now. Nah, we don't need you anymore. My side, they're going to tell me, they're going to tell you that I was terrifying, that I made six of them have to restrain me when coming in out of fear I would overpower them. I ask you again, which one is it? They're going to paint me as weak, they're going to paint me as strong. One problem is, neither one of them are right. Is that going to be a problem for you? No. Revealing his statesman suit underneath his prison clothes. For treason, you know the sentence is? It's death. I was a fearless leader of a rebellion. Get five years and his worthless soldiers get ten. And more importantly, how do I get pardoned and released after only six months? Yes, you heard that correctly. Six months. It's a funny system, ain't it? My side over here, they're going to call me now a traitor. They're saying I struck a deal. Yeah, a deal now it's the all of them released with me. That part never gets mentioned. I guess it's just not brave and proud, right? Other side over here, well, they're just going to say, oh, gosh, Paul, why don't you come and join us? And it doesn't look so good for me because as soon as I'm released, I'm named the new inspector of the county of Honolulu and my brother, mayor. Both sides are going to say I did it for the money. Neither side are ever going to recognize the massive wealth I discovered at the bottom of the ocean floor while diving twice. Guess I'm just a lucky guy. No, they're just going to still hate me as the guy that just did it for the money. And that's a smart move, and I'm running out of endings. Make it worse, when I become delegate to the Republican Party, all my people say you're just being used to court the Hawaiian vote. Yeah, no shit! <laughs> yeah, when they ignore you, I threaten to start a new party. One for you, that's when they listen. Guess who's learning the system? The battle, yeah, we lost it, yes, but it was only that. It was only a battle. The war never ended. Not for me, because I don't end. The arena's changed, but the war continues from one theater of war to the next, still doing, what are you doing? What are you doing? Why are you doing? Look for endings? Brave and proud, right, for your stories? Brave and proud, looking for those that, fuck it, just make it look real pretty, that'll be good enough. Where are those pretty endings getting you? Where are they getting us? There's a lot of people who fought very hard for you to be able to learn and tell whatever story you want, however you want. But you need to know the why, especially the why, even when it's ugly, especially when it is ugly. Kawa is ugly. The arenas change. The theaters of war change, but the why remains. He reconsiders. No, he doesn't. No, 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 no. He takes some time to bottle it up again. Eventually, I am not going to Both sides agree to one thing. We were 
top number of your out gun, we were getting blasted from shell fire coming from a tugboat off Diamond Head. We fled to the mountains for cover. And the funny thing about Manoa is while ripe with plant life, there was really hardly anything to eat. My guys were starving and we were, well, we were down. I came across a sympathizer to the Hawaiian cause. That's what, what they call anyone that helps us, even if they're Kanaka. That's a very smart group of theirs. There was a startled older woman who took us in. She cared for us and we rested. She had hardly enough food for all of us. She did what she could with what she had. She only had one animal left. She gave it to us for food. It was her dog. Can we begin now? Why? Fine. The candle stays lit. Thank you. 